Fabrizio Carboni, thank you so much for joining us on Upfront. Thank you for inviting me. The humanitarian situation in Gaza is spiraling. Uh, more than 33,000 people have been killed. A majority of those people have been women and children. Uh, according to one analysis, 100% of Gaza's population is at imminent risk of famine. Health care is also buckling. There's only about 10 of the territory's 36 hospitals even partially functioning. Uh, there's talk about a possible ground invasion in Rafah. Uh, your organization, International Committee of the Red Cross, is in Gaza. You're in touch with the teams there. Uh, could you talk to me about what you're hearing from the ground? What we hear from the ground is, is I believe, something which cannot be captured by figures. Uh, and, and I believe that at one stage, the, the way we have described the crisis in Gaza, we are running out of words and concepts to describe what is in Gaza. You know, as humanitarian actors, we've seen a lot of things, but what we see in Gaza, it's something we really have hard time to capture. And, and what is it? I think it's this permanent state of um, instability, this, this uh, precarious situation, this constant fear of being at the wrong time, uh, wrong place, not knowing what you're going to provide to your children, to your family. So there are the words, there are the, the concept, the destruction of health, the destruction of essential infrastructure, the fighting, um, the killing. And then there is something which is psychologically devastating, which is hard to capture, I think. So um, what we hear from the ground is just that colleagues, uh, Palestinian colleagues, mobile colleagues, uh, just can't take it anymore. One of the challenges, in addition to the sort of psychological uh, despair you're describing and the fear and all the things you've just named, is a very material uh, question around aid access. Uh, it's been an ongoing issue throughout the war. Uh, people are in dire need of aid. Uh, there are so many stories about Gazans who are struggling for survival, reports of families that are eating grass or even animal feed, uh, residents not being, ab being able to access medical care. All of this is part of the normalized, normalized picture in Gaza. Uh, could you talk a little bit about why uh, aid access is so difficult? Yeah. First, I, I really like the concept you use of this normalizing something which is by no standard possible to normalize. But I think you, you're capturing something very important uh, with this, and we need to be careful not to normalize uh, what's happening in Gaza. Today, while I'm talking, I have to, to, to acknowledge that the access of humanitarian assistance in Gaza has improved dramatically over the last two, three days. Now, what is needed is a sustained effort. Doesn't, it's not a matter of one day, two day of improvement. It needs to be sustained. And then there is the security and safety of humanitarian actors. I'm thinking obviously about Palestinian Red Crescent Society, who has lost many volunteers, but also other organizations. And we've seen last week what happened with uh, World Central Kitchen. So security for humanitarian actors and security for uh, the people of Gaza who needs to move freely to have access to essential services. This being said, what is needed to bring a minimum level of services and dignity. We, we're still far from this um, because dignity is about managing the dead. You know, a lot of dead bodies. We need to mm. give them a proper um, uh, burial and, and needs to focus on this. When it comes to, to trucks, trucks will not replace the hospitals who have been damaged or destroyed will not replace the water network which was affected and will not replace the uh, electricity infrastructure. So we need to acknowledge the improvement, but it can only be the beginning. Uh, earlier you mentioned what happened with World Central Kitchen. 
Uh, for the benefit of the audience, uh, April 1st was the day that seven aid workers from that nonprofit organization were killed by an Israeli airstrike. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu said that the attacks were unintentional, but he also said that, quote, this happens in wartime. Uh, do you think uh, enough precautions were taken uh, to protect workers, or, or, or better yet, are precautions in general sufficiently being taken to protect aid workers during this conflict? I'm just looking at the figures. You know, and when I look at the figures of the number of humanitarian actors killed during this round, last months of violence, it is just incomparable to what we've seen in other places around the world. So I, I will not, you know, I, I don't have firsthand information. The minimum we can say is that considering the level, uh, the number of people killed, the level of destruction, the level of people displaced, uh, the number of humanitarian actors killed, is that for sure the law of armed conflict, which protects all those people, was not central to all parties to this conflict. What are your thoughts on the specific dangers that aid workers are facing uh, in this war? Are they different than other conflicts? Are they different than in other regions? Yes, I think what makes Gaza different is that all Gaza is or was a battlefield, okay? I mean, comparison, it's always difficult, but it's like, you know, working in a trench on the front line. You might turn actors don't do that. Yeah. We don't, and, and you might, and civilians don't stay on the battlefield. So the specificity of Gaza is... Densely populated area, an area where fighting is possible everywhere and where population cannot leave the place. And, and, and it's very, very unique. And that's why also as, as humanitarian actors, we are taking way more risks than what we would take in any other country uh, around the world. Today, when I talk to my colleagues, Palestinian colleagues, international staff, the story I hear, the emotional state in which they are is, is really unique. I will use a word which I, I really don't like using when we speak about humanitarian action, but it's the concept of heroes. Mm. When I think about our Palestinian staff, when I think about the volunteers of the Palestinian Red Crescent Society, when I think about all the people who are trying to help others, and by the way, they are not all humanitarian actors, to do that today in Gaza, you are a special person. You, you are somebody who has something above average in terms of humanity, generosity, empathy, and courage. Powerful words. Uh, Fabrizio, thank you so much for joining us here on Upfront. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for the interview.